We're going to take you live to Wits University where the Ibo Mandaza, Professor Ibo Mandaza's lecture has now kicked off. Uh, let's take you there now. Bound to touch upon. I've been asked to look at the state of democracy in the Sadek region. And I decided that instead of looking broadly at the region, uh, in which the issue of democracy is self-evident, if you can talk of democracy, but we should, we should uh, focus on Zimbabwe. And I think that was the purpose of the title that David and his team gave me. But very timely because the elections were held just a few weeks ago, and just last, just yesterday, the Sadek Troika, Troika met at last. <laughs> I'll just send you a copy of the communique. Um, so, the first part of my lecture is the context, which is the legacy of O.R. Tambo. Three weeks ago today, this lecture was unceremoniously cancelled by the Secretary General of the African National Congress, Fikile Mbalula. In an email later on 6 September, a day before the scheduled lecture, Mbalula directed the head of the school, David Masando, Masondo, sorry, that the quote that the lecture should not proceed on Thursday. 7 September 2023, end of quote. The correspondence was copied to Comrade Mwatlante, the chairperson of the board of the All Tambo School of Leadership. Significantly, Malula was writing out of Harare, where he had accompanied President Cyril Ramaphosa from Nangagwa's inauguration on 4th September. And so while Ramaphosa returned to South Africa soon after the inauguration ceremony, Balula and his entourage extended their stay for discussions with their ZANU-PF counterparts. Speculation is rife as to the nature of the meetings between the two former liberation movements with reference to, quote, Czech book diplomacy, end of quote about which we'll soon know more. You've heard of it before? Checkbook diplomacy. Yeah, Molly. But, but, but Barula's email later suggested that the discussions included the subject of the Messi election in Zimbabwe on 23rd August, August 2023. And so, I quote the sentence that was suggestive of the ANC being engaged with the crisis in Zimbabwe. I quote from Balula's letter. At this moment, the leadership of the ANC is engaged in a number of delicate engagements regarding the situation in Zimbabwe. In this context, a public lecture at this time on what is clearly an ANC platform would complicate these initiatives. We invite you, David, to engage with us further on the detail of these matters and the possibility of the lecture being held in future in a different format and on a different platform." End of quote. I'm not sure, though I remain as suspicious at the reference to a different format on a different platform. Whatever the import of these words, it is clear that David Masondo and his comrades stuck to their guns, postponing the lecture as they have done with the same title, the same format, the same platform. I am therefore pleased to be here as part of the assertion of academic freedom. 
and a large response to those in our midst who dare try to muzzle the few corridors of intellectual and ideological discourse such as the school. For these corridors are few in post-liberation Southern Africa. In this regard, let me quote from one of the many comrades at home and across the diaspora who were outraged at Mbarula's email letter, which, thanks to social media, had gone viral within hours of the dispatch from Harare. Apologies, David, if I'm inadvertently betraying confidences, but a mutual comrade confided in me, and I'm likewise confiding in my audience appropriately. I quote, Good evening, Comrade David. I hope this message doesn't offend you. At any rate, I would strongly encourage you to stand fast against any interference with the Or Tambo school, school's total autonomy and power to decide who to invite to speak on any subject your institution deems appropriate. Any abdication of this principle would be a betrayal of the principles or are lived for and upheld. It is your board, board's responsibility to uphold this cardinal principle. End of quote. The author of this has agreed that I, I can disclose his name. Mavuso Mismang. Comrade Mavuso Mismang. I want to add here how critical and indeed most legitimate that more and more of those of us who are from the ranks of the former liberation movements stand up and be counted to inspire the younger generation, keep the flame of liberation alive and, re and remain a thorn in the flesh of those amongst us we have since gone rogue and constitute an embarrassment to the history and the objectives of the liberation struggle. Yes, who will dare shut us up, comrades? Who amongst them has the moral authority to try to do so? Need I say any more? And now to the topic of my lecture. After that very useful digression and an, and an open challenge to those in our midst who have since gone rogue. I will spend less on the elections per se in Zimbabwe and more about SADC, whose election observer mission, SIOM, has at last plucked the courage to state the reality that has been the nature and content of the crisis in Zimbabwe over the last two decades. More significant in this regard is the extent to which all this has exposed the cowardice of many of the current leadership in SADC, while providing us the opportunity to remind all of us of the origins and mandate of the regional body itself. In doing so, to prompt SADC to take on its responsibility in the face of the crisis in Zimbabwe, convene the extraordinary summit, as it has done several times before, over the, the last four decades of its existence. For we have to be, we have to remember that SADC was born out of the liberation struggle in Southern Africa. The successor of the Flandine states that were the backbone and rear guard of the struggles in Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and South Africa. And today, the custodian of peace, security, and, sub and stability in the sub-region. So, to the August 23rd election in Zimbabwe, 
I call this the, non, the unending legacy of disputed elections. Understandably, the SADC election observer mission report on the 23rd of August harmonized elections in Zimbabwe has taken center stage and refuses to go away. But it was not the only observer mission report that returned a negative verdict on the poll. There are the European Union Observer Mission, EOM, the Qatar Center, the Commonwealth Observer Group, and the African Union reports. Although there has been little or no reference to them, the ANC, SWAPO, FRELIMO, CCM of Tanzania, MPLA, the Malawi Congress Party, and the Botswana government also dispatched observer missions to Zimbabwe. There is no guessing why these observer mission reports have not been made public. But significantly, not one of them has contradicted the, imp the import None of them has contradicted the import of the SIOM report, which has clearly left the authorities in Harare embarrassed and wounded, while most of the SADC member states, and indeed the AU generally, appear to have acknowledged its findings by neither congratulating Mnangagwa nor attending his inauguration. President Ramaphosa, in particular, has made some clumsy statements on the subject. At the risk, to quote an observer on social media, of, quote, breaking the rules of procedure and undermining the authority of SADC by taking a position on the Zimbabwean issue before the region decides at the, at the summit, end of quote. In this regard, Sections of the media have caricatured Ramaphosa's position on Zimbabwe. For example, Business Day of 21st September had this very suggestive cartoon on, quote, premature congratulations. I almost got it wrong. Eh? There, with, with Ramaphosa stating on the one hand, the quote, the ZEC made a declaration, and on that basis, we issued our congratulations to Mnangagwa, end of quote. And on the side, other side of it, this, quote, this just in, the EU to withdraw 5 million financial aid to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission due to election irregularities and lack of transparency, end of quote. I'm sorry, I'm not able to show you the cartoon, but... It's here, business day. Nonetheless, Ramaphosa's stance on the recent elections in Zimbabwe is welcome relief to the authorities in Harare. Not least his comments that no election is perfect, nor without challenges. Even in the USA, he said. But surely, how does one ignore the stark reality that Zimbabwe has been the sick man in the region? In a region, particularly South Africa itself, in which free, fair, and credible elections are the order of the day, where ruling and opposition parties can interact either in business, in parliament, or in jest as fellow citizens of the same country. By contrast, the Zanupia state in Zimbabwe has since independence treated opposition parties as enemies to be vanquished, whether it was Joshua and Komo and Zapu, Edgar Tekere and Zoom, Morgan Changrai and MDC, and now Nelson Shamisa and Triple C. It has jailed without trial political prisoners like Job Sikala and Jacob Ngarivume. 
manipulates the delimitation report and likewise the voters role and has virtually captured it to itself the judiciary and the law enforcement and security apparatus. As Blade Nzimande observed in his remarks on the ZANU-PF that, that had by 2000 since lost the very forces that were part of the struggle. I quote from Blade, although without his voice, now you, now you know, comrades, when we went to Zimbabwe as part of the South African Communist Party fact-finding mission, when we engaged with our ZANU-PF comrades, everybody was the enemy. Said CTU was the enemy, professionals, academics, everybody. But we asked, how come, comrades, all these forces you are saying are enemies, were they not part of the victorious forces led by ZANU-PF on the victory of your struggle in 1980? What has changed? ZANU-PF has lost the middle classes, he has lost the professionals and intellectuals, and has lost many urban-based organizations. It has become a rural party because of the mistakes they were making. Now, the comrades are denying yet that there is a problem. There is danger once liberation movements begin to lose power or sense they are about uh, are losing power, they start doing f a lot of funny things. The first thing they start doing is coming up with a quote, radical concepts. Mugabe lost a referendum in 2000 and then started a radical land reform. They took land anyhow. And if they do not succeed, they unleash the security forces on the population, end of quote. Uh, <coughs> so, I was asked, also asked to, in this regard, make comments uh, designed to warn our South African hosts, please preserve and defend the national institutions that you have. Preserve the tradition of free, fair, and credible elections that you have. And the way to start, in my view, is through your own government and the ANC. to stand up and criticize the government in Zimbabwe and the ANC and the and ZANU-PF for the things they've been doing over the last two decades and not try and defend them <coughs> as I just indicated. Indeed, both the electoral process of the last year and the poll itself on 23rd August were part of a major security operation the likes of which has not been seen before in Zimbabwe. Not to mention again the point that every election since 2000 has been rigged and, and all ended in dispute. As Nigerian activist Aisha Yesufu stated recently, I quote, until rigged elections are treated in the same as, as coups, democracy will continue to be in danger. End of quote. Clearly, the 23rd August 23 election is in serious dispute and joins a series of coups, not excluding the military one of November 2017. This is the very antithesis of democracy itself and the renders electoral process farcical, a mere mechanism through which the securocrat state seeks to renew its illegitimate mandate, especially and significantly with respect to the presidential poll. As we have pointed out before, 
By all accounts, Robert Mugabe lost to Morgan Shangrai in the presidential polls of 2002, 2008, and 2013. Closer scrutiny of the 2018 elections would appear to confirm the view of a, a number of analysts that Emerson Mnangagwa likewise lost to Nelson Shamisa. The security operation, including the deployment of the shadowy fares and the calculated delay in the supply of ballot papers in Arari and Bloweo on polling day, with many polling stations securing these well into the night of 23rd August and even on the following day, 24th of August. Have you ever seen that? The rural areas all had the ballot papers in time. Arare and Blawayo didn't get their ballot papers until late into the night. And it's no guessing how many people would have been disenfranchised. And you can understand why, in terms of the rigging uh, uh, objectives, Arare alone accounts to, uh, for one third of the total voting population. So a disruption of the capital city would have been enough uh, to achieve the purpose for which the, that was being done. I mean, we are now learning that the rigging was done mostly in the triple C strongholds, in the opposition strongholds. Precisely in the areas where the triple C won is where the rigging was done most. Smart guys. The on that on that basis, no one should be left in any doubt as to the extensive rigging that underpinned Nangagwa's wafer thin victory of fifty two percent to Shamisa's forty four. Time will soon confirm. But we can confidently conclude that the election as a whole was neither free, fair, nor credible. A most depressing, if not cynical, feature about elections in Zimbabwe is the extent to which elections are so brazenly stolen and the voters rendered useless statistics. Deplorable, depressing. More so when we hear would-be statesmen glibly dismissing a pattern that has become <coughs> legion is our as mere challenges, to quote Ramaphosa. Challenges that can be addressed in the future. Not to mention the shamelessness with which, with which one can stand before the UN and claim that such an election was free, fair and credible. Why, why would you have to say that if it was free, fair, and credible? So, what is to be done? The urgency of the SADC intervention in the crisis in Zimbabwe. There was initially the obvious expectation that the SADC tracker of politics, defense, and security would be seized immediately with the situation in Zimbabwe, especially given the verdict of the observer mission on 25th August 2023, with the final version submitted on 4th September, just before Mnangagwa was inaugurated. Since then, there has been a discernible vacillation and even debate as to the mandate of SADC and its organ. All this quite apart from the emotional outpourings out of government spokespersons and other critics of Mumba, the head of, of Siom in Harare. Crude attacks on the person of Mumba and even against President Ichilema. Most unprecedented and certainly bordering on serious diplomatic breach on the part of the government of Zimbabwe towards its northern neighbor. I'll make comments later on the, to the <coughs> meeting of the Troika yesterday and the comments they made in this regard. 
notwithstanding a statement from Ramaphosa on the very day he was defending the, the message he had sent to Mnangagwa congratulating him, the SADC would have to meet and discuss the report. The retort out of Harare in particular and the region generally has been to throw doubt on the mandate of SADC in these matters, let alone its capacity to do anything, including the following statement. Supposedly from SADC, Secretary itself, but dubious given our understanding of the man matter of SADC. And I quote, I think some of you might have seen us on social media, a little note saying SADC electoral observer missions only observe elections. SADC does not conduct elections in its member states, but observes them. We then make recommendations. Understand the role of SADC. When it comes to observing elections, our mandate is only to observe and issue a report, end of quote. Now, of course, this vacillation, this kind of statements reflect, reflect badly on the lack of political will on the part of the current leadership of SADC. But it certainly the very antithesis of the mandate of the region's body, of the region's regional bodies, Vinduk Treaty of 1992, its organ on politics, defense and security of 1996, and the SADC Electoral Advisory Council, SIAC, which was formed by the organ in 2005. Well, we certainly didn't expect him to hold back, and he didn't in delivering his public lecture, Professor Ibo Mandaza, beginning there by eviscerating the SG of the ANC in terms of that initial postponement of this meeting, lauding the principle of the OR Tambo School of Leadership by going ahead with this in the format in which they had initially decided, and also de decrying what he labeled the denialism on the political situation in Zimbabwe. He also talks about the fact that uh, Figuilem Balula, in his capacity as the Secretary General of uh, the ANC, was writing to the Or Tambo School from Harare, where he was accompanying President Cyril Ramaphosa, and he claims that uh, he stayed on for a few days in order to speak to um, his ZANU-PF counterparts. And this, of course, all happening amidst the contested election there as uh, the MDC, in, in fact, a number of of people who've been watching what's going on, including the SADC as well. Talking about that particular election, also the atmosphere not being free and fair, lots of concern even about that. So he says that for him, this was an email that was suggesting that they were quite involved in what was happening and the situation post the election.